If you always wanted to make your very first game but never got started or started someday but never kept moving forward, well, you are definitely in the right place. My name is Guilherme, I'm a professional game developer and I want to show you in this video everything that you need to know in practice so I'm here behind my computer to get started. And don't worry, you don't need to know anything to start following this video and I will teach you everything that you need to know and in the end of the video you're gonna have a cool game done and ready for you to play and share with your games and yes i'm talking about a very interesting game with controls character movements jumps and puzzles so make sure you stick to the end of this video because i'm very happy to teach everything for you and see what you'll be able to learn and do in this video we're going to be using a very special game engine called cave and you will see that it is very straightforward easy to use and very intuitive for you to get started so enough talking i will go to my computer and show you everything you need to know so prepare yourself get yourself comfortable and let's get it started the very first thing that you need to do in order to start making your game is download the game engine and i'm here with cave engine cave engine is a, a game engine for windows for you to create your 3d projects in your computer in a very fast easy and interactive way so you'll be able to import models uh, create scripting using python which is a very simple and powerful um, programming language you'll be able to with physics in your game, animations, and everything that you can imagine. You can create literally any type of game from top down to first person, third person, vehicle games, or anything that it's in your mind. So just go to this website. I'll leave the link in the description, but you can check the URL right here. Okay, uh, and scroll down here and go to the download sections. So you'll be able to find all the information necessary in order for you to get the engine and remember it's free you can just download it and start using and once you've downloaded the engine you will find a zip file and once you extract the zip file you will find those files right here by the way do not extract the zip file into your desktop some people have encountered some problems by extracting the engine in the desktop so try to extract them in like your c local disk or something like that because it will be a little bit safer for you to start using it, okay? And once you've, um, you've extracted the engine, just double click this editor file here. And as you can see here, it opens um, the editor. This is literally the game engine editor. And here you will find all the main information necessary for you to get started um, with your projects. By the way, if, you, if the engine does not open on your machine, try to update your drivers, like your graphic cards drivers, because that may be the issue, okay? And another common thing that people used to comment is, hey, I've just opened the engine, but the text looks very uh, small or pixelated or, or anything like that. If that's the case, you can just adjust this, the text size in this slider right here. So you can see, I can make it super small, almost impossible to read, but I can make it super big, almost impossible to read as well. So make sure you adjust the text um, so it fits in your screen, okay? I will click here to reset the scale because it's fine for me and let's create a new project and get started in your first game. So click here, new project, and I can type um, um, a name for it. So we call it YouTube Live Tutorial 01. And I can specify a project path by clicking here and selecting a folder in your computer. And if you don't specify it, you create in the default uh, directory uh, and I will leave it here in the default directory. By the way, you can always right click in the project here and click to review in Explorer if you want to find it very easily, okay? So go ahead and click create project. You can see that with Cave, things are very easy and fast so there's no loading time and you you don't need to expect loading times anytime soon by using cave uh, the, the the engine does not require you to compile stuff or to do any fancy uh, compilation or preparation or anything like that it's very straightforward as i said okay so this is the engine it's already open and we can start navigating and by the way a uh, quick overview here about everything that's going on. You can see that we do have a 3D view tab. This is the main tab. And this is where you will control um, everything in your projects. If you hold the right mouse button, you'll be able to move the camera as a first person game. And just like a first person game using W, A, S, and D, you'll be able to control the camera. You can also use Q or 
A or I, sorry, uh, to move up or down. So very straightforward. And of course, if you left click uh, an item, it will select it. You can also select the items here in the scene graph in the left here. You can see that I do have the cube, the plane and two lights, a green and a red one. For now in cave, you cannot select lights directly here. You can only select here using the scene graph. So let's select this light and Something that's very interesting is as soon as you select the object, you can see that this properties tab here on the right, this is sensitive to what you have selected here in the 3D view or anything anywhere else in the engine. So you will be able to control all the properties that your, your game and the entity or anything have here. For example, this green light does have a light component. By the way, Cave Engine is component based, so the entity um, is pretty much like an empty uh, container that you can add components, like a transform component. Let me expand this, and you can see that I can adjust the position of the light and so on. And let me expand the light component here as well. Let me zoom in so you guys can see. If I expand, you'll be able to control all the settings available here. For example, the color. Let me change the color to something else. And you can see that the color is updated here. Let me change the intensity. And this is something important. If you want to, you can control click to set a manual value. For example, I want this to be like 20. Very intense um, um, light, right? So here we go and I can change the radius or anything like I want. Very easy and uh, fast to create stuff. You can always click here to add new components or just, oops, I forgot. Let me delete this component. I added it by accident or right click here and you'll be able to add the components as well. But we'll talk about this in a moment, okay? Uh, I will delete those lights because I don't want them and we want to straight for, forward start creating the game. By the way, um, you will notice that the game does not have like a sunlight different from other engines because the sunlight is incorporated into the, um, the engine itself. Meaning that the, the scene here, each scene does have sun and emission and ambient lightning option. So if I click here in the background or I can go ahead and click here in this um, edit scene settings right here in the scene graph, you'll be able to edit your scene. I can rename them. So this is main scene. And you can see that as soon as I rename it, uh, the scene over here, the name of the scene here below change it as well. And this is another go good thing that we need to explore in cave. This is the asset browser. Here you will find everything in your project. So you will find folders with other stuff. I can always go back here. Let me zoom in so you guys can see. And I can have a lot of different stuff here. So meshes, fonts, and of course my scene. It's sensitive, so I can click here to always show here. So for example, let me select this object. And then if I click in the scene, you can see that it opens here and I can right click to add new stuff, but we will talk about this later on as well. So let me just real quick select this and maybe change the ambient and sky. So I change the color to something like that. Maybe I can go ahead and add some ambient intensity because uh, it's dark, like it's completely dark here, the ambient. So I'll make it bluish, you can see a little bit better. And then if I change the sun, I mean, increase the intensity a little bit. Oh, that's fine for me. I like it. By the way, there's some post processing going on here, the ambient occlusion. Uh, it's work in progress. So there are some artifacts. You can reduce this by adjusting the settings a little bit. I'll leave it open. I'll, I'll leave it on for now. It's fine, but you can always adjust as, as well the shadows here. You can see that we do have some pattern painting, so you can adjust uh, some settings here in order to increase or decrease this pattern painting. Let me increase, decrease the bias a little bit. I put, I hold Ctrl and click and type 0 0.01 maybe, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, I leave it like that. And of course, most importantly, I can adjust the time of the day that the game will be and the angle of the sun. You can rotate the sun around. 
very simple to navigate here. So it's fine for me. I'm done for now. There's a lot of other options, but we want to do something better. We want to start creating a game. That's why we are here, right? Uh, of course, uh, you already know that you can click here to select the objects and you can use those uh, rows here to move it around. So if you don't, you're not finding the row, you can just press W on your keyboard to show the arrows or you can go ahead and click here and you can also click here to rotate or press I or you can and you can see that you'll be able to rotate your objects or you can click here in the scale or press R to scale the objects as well. Really nice, right? Um, by the way, when I'm moving, I can hold control key to enable snapping or you can just do this by clicking here in enable snapping. Really nice. Uh, if I press shift D, it will duplicate the object. And if I press delete, it will delete the object, just like we did with the lamp. Okay, so that's enough introduction. Let's start making a badass game. And this is very interesting. In Cave, uh, you can evolve this into a badass game very easily, like more than in easier than you, can, than you can expect because there are so many stuff already done and ready for you to start making your game that you'll be impressed very fast by that. By the way, one last thing that is important to know, you can press Ctrl S to save your project. Always save the project so you don't lose your progress. And you can always click here in play game or press F5 in order to start the simulation. You can see that the game is being executed uh, this is why you have this green, uh, this blue outline here. And I cannot select the objects because of course the game is running. But of course, if I want to select the object wh while the game is running, just press F3 and you'll be able to move them around. But just keep in mind that all the changes you do while the game is uh, running will be um, undone once you stop the game. So keep this in mind. This is only for editing and debugging to know your game if everything is correct. You can press F F3 again to hide the controls again. And of course, you can always click here to stop the game or just press F5. So you can see once I stop it, it uh, undid all the changes I did. Okay, so let's make a game. But for that, we need some assets. And luckily, Cave provides a bunch of cool stuff for us out of the box. So if you click here in packages, you'll be able to find some interesting stuff uh, that Cave provides for you um, to get started. This is not included in your project by default. You need to include them. So keep that in mind. This way you don't need to worry about making your project like too heavy or anything like that. This is not included only if you want and need this. Um, I will import both of these files. This is a, a texture. Uh, a default test thing for you to apply in your objects. So if I click here one time, you'll be able to see a preview, a description, who made this and the option to import into your project. I will click here. You can see that we already have a new folder, but let's import the proto character as well. The proto character is a great way to start your projects. It was provided by uh, an artist called Luende Aguiar, and it does provide a lot of um, default animations or any and a lot of good stuff for you to get started. So we'll click here to import to project. And you can already see that we do have this proto character folder. I'll click here in packages again to go back to my main uh, folder and I will double click the test grid folder and I'll be able to find the test grid um, material. So if I click here, I can edit this material, of course, but if I drag and drop it to a mesh, you'll be able to see this applied to the mesh. So you can see this is already looking much better. Let me delete this, this cube and this as well. I only want the, the ground. So let me do this. All right. And we want the proto character. But before that, let's click here in mesh and I'll tell you how to add a new mesh. You can just drag and drop the mesh here. So this is the default cylinder you can hold control to move it and scale it just fine. Here we go. And of course, if I want to set a material, I can drag and drop it or I can go ahead here and open the mesh component and manually select the material here in this dropdown. So let me select the test grid. Here we go. Now we have 
a very simple scene for us to get started. By the way, many people ask how to import images into your project and I will show you it real quick. And this applies to images, but also to 3D models and anything else, okay? So let me open a folder. I will open this material folder here and drop my image here. And I do have this image here in my uh, file system. This is a very low resolution skybox. So if I zoom in, you'll be able to find that this is not a very high resolution image, but I will import this because you see in a moment that this will not going to be a problem in cave. I'm more important. I'm more interested in the fact that this is not very, uh, this is very lightweight. So I will just click and drag and drop to my asset browser and you can see that we do have the image here. If you are importing a 3D model like a dot plan file or an FBX or an OBJ, you'll be, you'll be prompted with a menu in order to adjust the importing settings, okay? So this image here, if I click, you'll be able to see all the details about it. So it's already imported. I can right click here and rename this to Skybox Texture. And let me apply this to the sky. I will click here in the sky and I will go here in ambient and sky and in sky color right here. Let me zoom in so you guys can see. I can drag and drop this image like that and you immediately be able to see the image being applied as the sky box. As I said, the resolution is not very good, but something that we can do very easily in cave is blur the sky box. So in this sky blur option, I can just drag this up and you'll be able to blur it as you want. You can also adjust the intensity and you can also rotate because you can see that this, this sun is supposed to be right here. Let me just undo the blur a little bit, but the shadow is like in the opposite side. So let me rotate this. And of course I can rotate the shadow, but in this case, I want to rotate this, the, the sky box. So in the sky angle, I can rotate this so it looks correct. Nice. And if I want to, I can also use the same sky box to uh, set the ambient color here. So if I drag and drop this to this, you can see that it will use this sky box as the ambient color. I don't want this, so I'll just click here and I won't do because I want this very lightweight color. It's fine for me but it's always good to know that you do have those options, okay? Um, so now let's literally import the proto character. I'll go back to the hood folder. You can see that we do have a proto character. By the way, uh, the, the thumbnail here is not updated every time to save resources, but you can right click here and go to asset settings and just reload thumbnails. You can see that it gets reloaded um, just fine, okay? By the way, this is just for the visuals. You don't need to do this every time. By the way, I will open the photo character and you find a lot of stuff. You find uh, an armature, which is the skeletal mesh of the character. You find the animator, which is an advanced animation system that Cave Engine does have. I'll talk about that in another video, but it's very good because it provides an easy way to set up jumping, idling, walking and running animations. And of course, if you want the raw animations, you do have all the animations right here. But what we are interested in is this proto mesh here. You can see that this is like a mesh asset. You can see here in this type, but you can also here uh, see here that it does have this gray uh, color here below. This indicates that this is a mesh and Cave Asian does uh, that a lot. For example, the material does have the sphere looks and the if you look at the scene, you can see that it does have a green, sorry, a blue uh, indication here. And I can drag and drop this proto mesh to my scene and you can immediately see that we do have a very good looking character. By the way, uh, the, the shadow looks very pixelated, but you can fix this by clicking here again in the, sorry, in the background and then going to sun, shadows, and then we can decrease the area a little bit. Really nice. Now it looks better. You can adjust, of course, the, the PCF as well to make it even better. All right, sounds good. 
so this is the character and we want to animate this character because of course we want to play this we want to do some cool stuff with this project by the way i'm finding this um the ambient color a little bit too much i want to have Nice, I'll leave it like that for now. Um, so let's come adjust the settings of this character so it does have uh, moving behavior, okay? So this is exactly what we are interested in this video. Uh, the very first thing, it's a good practice in Cave that you do not use like this mesh itself as the character. Uh, it's always a good practice to create an empty mesh. So let me right click here and create an empty can see that it does have an empty here it does not have a shape in the world because of course there's no nothing here the empty is just a transform but I will right click here and add um, uh, physics where is the physics here we go and character component this is the character component that will allow this object to move around okay and navigate around but as you can see, there's no shape, you cannot see anything, but this will change if I enable this show high debug physics option here on top. If I click here, you can see that all my objects now have a physics representation, including this and the character, as you can see um, right here. I will move it up and I will hold control to move it in one meter up. And if I click here, you can see that it gets uh, the character physics gets updated and I can adjust the settings here in the collision shape. For example, I can decrease the radius and increase the height a little bit so it touches the ground. It's too much maybe. Nice. So this is the correct radius for me. It looks fine. And I will just select this proto here and I rename this. I right click here and rename this to proto mesh okay and i'll rename this empty here that is this object to the player by right clicking it you can also rename stuff by renaming here okay it's fine and i will select this proto mesh and drag and drop to inside this player to make it a child of my player if you drag it and drop it uh, an entity into another by accident you can always right click here and select remove parent and it will remove the parent but in this case it was on purpose i want this to be a child and something that i also want is to reset the position because the position is wrong as you can see here so I'll go ahead in the position i will hold control and i'll click here and i'll type zero and i'll press tab uh, and type zero and tab and type zero again so it's all zeros and i'll move this down so it aligns at the bottom so Click here and hold control and I'll move it one meter down. One last thing that I need to adjust and is you can see that this player, the character component does have an arrow indicating the front side. So this is forward for my character and you can see that the proto mesh is looking to the side. So I will just rotate this um, by typing I on my keyboard or, or clicking here and holding control, I rotate this 90 degrees nice so it's pointing at the right direction now i will click here to disable the physics and you can see that the game is almost ready i'll select the player i'll move it up so you can see and i'll press play game oh something very important that i completely missed uh, you need to select the proto mesh, this is very important, and delete the rigid body. Otherwise, the rigid body of this mesh will try to collide with the capsule of the player, and this will make your frame rate go to like one frame per second, and this will not gonna work, okay? Uh, so go to the proto mesh here and delete the rigid body component. We don't want this, and by default, once you every time you drag and drop like a mesh into the scene, you'll be able to see that it gets. Uh, a rigid body component so we don't want that for the proto mesh so make sure you select it and delete the rigid body okay so now if i play the game you can see that the character of, um, has fallen into the ground just like we can expect but it does not move so let's make it move and it's very simple again i can just select the player and 
right click here and create go into logic oh sorry not logic but into gameplay and select player controller and very easily we do have here uh, by the way it needs to be in the same place where you have the character component meaning that it's not in the proto itself it's in the player but you can see here that it does have all the controls such as walk speed and run speed uh, you have options if you want this to jump and I will enable this because I want jumping and by the way if you want to adjust the jump settings you, can, you need to go into the character component character physics and adjust the jump speed I will decrease it because I know it's a little bit too much for our needs and if I press play you can see that I can move with WA and SMD and if I hold shift it will run and if I hold in and if I press space it will jump nice really nice but there is only one thing left to do which is the animations because the proto is not responding to the animations luckily with cave it's literally very simple to do this I can just select the proto mesh go ahead here in this animation you can see that it is selected with the proto idle by default but as I said the proto uh, pack here comes with a bunch of stuff including the animator and I will show you the animator last but if I click here in proto animations you can see that I can drag and drop any animation like the walking and it will start walking by the way if I have um, an empty an entity sorry with a mesh component selected which I have here which is the proto mesh I can double click to automatically apply the animation you can see oh it does have this weird glitch but um, once you reload the project it will be fine so don't worry about that and of course I can double click in the proto animator and it will apply this animator to this proto mesh you can see that it does have here now the proto animator and this as I said before is uh, a specific animation type that cave engine provides for you um, to allow you let me click here one time to specify very advanced system that will interact with the other cave engine systems such as the character component and this will automatically identify if the character is walking running jumping or idling and it will do the appropriate animations and also do the transform changes so it looks at the right direction by the way there's one thing that we might need to adjust which is the running threshold here to make sure that the run speed um, is correct here otherwise it will run instead of walking or vice versa so yeah we need to adjust this so let's play the game once you can immediately see that it is almost working but we have two things wrong the very first one is it is looking at the opposite side so we need to rotate this 180 degrees in the y-axis which is the up axis in cave and it is always running so as I said we need to adjust here the proto animation the rotation is very easy you can go ahead and change this rotation override here and as I said we need to rotate this in the y-axis by 180 degrees so I'll hold ctrl click here and type 180 and the running here we need to change the run threshold right here so I will decrease this a little bit maybe to this actually I need this I need to increase not to, to decrease let's see the run speed is 5.9 5.9 meters per second so let me select the proto animator and yeah it's fine Let, let's put five here it will probably work here we go now the character is walking and if I run it is running nice nice very nice uh, something that I'm not enjoying is the fact that it is looking um, it is rotating the character very fast so it looks very robotic we can change this very easily by selecting the animator and increasing this blend time here sorry not the blend time the blend time will, will change like the interpolation time between the animations you can change this move look at here so let me increase this play the game oops play it again 
okay you can see that it is better now i can increase it a little bit more maybe like 86 percent yeah it is looking good perfect so we can see that we almost have like a complete game but there's only one thing left to do which is adding like camera controls and there's a lot of different camera controls in cave which is very nice let me move this down i will select the player and move it down so it starts here in the ground and I'll also move it to the left holding control yeah this is fine for us um and there's a lot of different again camera types and i'll show you two camera types here in this video because i believe that it will be very interesting for you to see how them all works and you can pick them um if you want okay the very first camera type that i will show you is a top-down camera so it's easy enough just right click here and add a camera and you can see that once you added the camera if you play the game again it will go to the camera um, view you can see that it is in the camera view you can preview this by the way you cannot select as well the camera for now here you need to select it here in the left uh, if you expand the camera component and expand the preview you can see what the camera is viewing fine so i move it back i'll rotate this camera 180 degrees so let me go ahead here in the rotation hold ctrl and type 180 and I'll move it up a little bit and down. Maybe 45 degrees will be enough. By the way, if you don't want to move to rotate and move the objects like this, you can always select here to transform globally the object and you need to ignore and this gizmo will ignore the transform. So this is a great um, camera position for us. We can always adjust the field of view. But what we want to is to add a top-down camera component to my camera so right click here go to gameplay gameplay cameras and I will add the top-down camera and you need to type the player name and I'll type player because again this is the name of the player you can see it's player so the camera knows what to follow it's very important to type that and you can see some stuff that you need to adjust here there's a lot of new gizmos here uh, the very first thing that I would adjust is the height I want this line to be in the center of the player because the, the, the player object is centered here so I want this to follow this and I do need to adjust the distance which is how far away the camera is from the player and I'll try to keep this in the center and you can see those two values here those two um, circles here this is the minimum distance and the maximum distance that the camera needs to be in a player let me increase the ground a little bit so we can see it a little bit better nice and if you start a game i press play you can see that the camera will follow the player just like you can expect from a third person camera and the, the this camera component is very interesting because it provides a lot of control for example um as i said let me press f3 and select the camera oh, we're not going to be able to to see so let me stop the game um you can see this near circle here this is the minimum let me select the camera and highlight this minimum option here and if the player moves around in this minimum radius the camera will not try to follow up but if it reaches this maximum, it will try to follow up like 100% and it will interpolate in between. So this is very important uh, for any camera. Like if you study a lot about cameras, you'll find that this is very important in a game in order uh, to have like a realistic camera, a uh, top-down camera. And another thing that is very interesting is that this the engine does have this option to only make the camera follow the height of the player once the player is in the ground. And if you study cameras, you will find that this is very important. So let me add like a mesh, a default cube right here. Let me apply our material to it, our test material. I will increase the size. I will do a shift D and create a copy of this. Maybe move it to the side a little bit. And if I play, if I play the game and run, 
by the way uh, there's some due to my screen recording if you find like the character glitching a little bit it this for some reason does not appear here in my machine but appears in the recording i'm not sure why so just keep that in mind that's why i'm explaining um so if i jump the camera is not moving with my character but if my character touches the ground you can see that the camera moves with it so this is very nice so this is one way to create a camera in cave but again, there's a lot of different ways and we, uh, we will explore another one, which is a third person camera, because it will add a lot of new stuff for you right out of the box. So it's great to have in your knowledge as well. So I'll go ahead and delete this camera. We don't need this camera anymore. I'm not going to use it and I'll add a new one. So right click in my player, add a children, uh, children, sorry, and I'll add a camera. So you can see that now we have a camera inside my player. And again, remember, I added it as a child of my player. This time, it's important to have the camera inside my player, okay? For the top-down camera, you don't need, you don't want the camera as a child of the player, but for the, the third-person camera, you need to, okay? And just like I did before, I move the camera to the back and I'll rotate it 180 degrees. Move it up a little bit maybe play around with the feet of feel yeah it's fine and then what i would do is right click here go to gameplay gameplay camera third person camera and i'll add this camera here um and again it does have everything ready the very first thing that you need to understand is the head offset this offset is like the, the camera if there's a wall here it will zoom in it will try to approximate from the head of the character because if it is in the center of the, the character it you approximate in the butt of the player and we don't want this we want the head okay and you can even make it a little bit to the side it's fine okay and out of the box you can literally press play and you can see that we do have a camera it does have like the limit so it does not go upside down and if you move the player, you can see that it imme immediately rotates the player accordingly to the camera and you can have the controls. And by the way, it does have camera collision. So you can see here, just like as I said, it is respecting the player. And once again, you do have your, your game ready to go. Nice, right? Really nice. Let me adjust the camera a little bit more. I'll make this the center. And this align here, I you maybe increase it a little bit. Oops. It does have this uh, artifacts again, but if you restart the project and export the project, it will work just fine. This is just like a loading issue that we are trying to solve. So don't worry a lot about that. Yeah, now this looks way better. Really nice. And there's one last thing that I like to do, um, which is show you how to create templates in Cave because this is very useful and it will also allow me to show you a little bit of scripting because there's one thing that every game needs, which is a challenge. So. We can do a little bit of platforming in this little tutorial game, as you can see. But what if we add like some spikes that the player cannot collide with? So let's do this right now. It will be very interesting. Um, I'll go ahead in the root folder and I'll right click here and create a new folder. And I'll right click and rename this to um, gameplay stuff, <laughs> just gameplay stuff. And I'll double click it to open. And inside this folder, I right click and create a new entity template. And I will right click and rename this to spikes. Um, our template here does have this green indication here. And what is a template? Well, if you imagine a game, you want to have like a lot of enemies in the scene and you want to have a lot of like the same object multiple times, but you, you don't exactly want to create a copy of this object because let's say this object here and I press Shift D to create a new copy and I move this right here, for example, it's fine, right? It works just fine. But what if I want to change this object later on? 
all those objects. I will have to manually go ahead and change all them. And this is not ideal. This is not good. We don't want this. So we want to create a template that we can create and replicate across the scene. So we can use this for enemies, for the uh, spikes, for the properties and everything else in your project. Okay. And if I double click these spikes, you can see that it creates an entire new scene for us to work with it. And it is empty. I will press Shift A to add a new object, or I can uh, right click here to add it as well. And I will add a mesh. And you can see that we do have a default mesh in this, um, in this environment here. Again, we are editing a template, okay? I can do everything that I can in the other situations. I can add this, for example, and let's add a tint here. This is a new thing in the mesh component. I will add some tint to this. I'll make it a little bit red. Nice. And let's go to the mesh and see if some of them resembles um, a spike. The default cone will do the job for us. Make it smaller. Move it up, make it even more smaller. And we also need a new material. So let me create it. Uh, let me go to the material folder. By the way, you can create the material anywhere you want. I'm just creating the material folder so it's more organized. And I right click, create a new asset, material. Where is my material? Here you go. You can see it here. And I rename this to Spike Matte. And I will double click this material to apply to this, um, to this selected object, or I can just drag and drop it. And I will click it on to edit it. I will edit the albedo color. I can set like a default color or I can just go ahead and select an existing texture. For example, this. I'm not sure if it will look good. Maybe yes, maybe not. Hmm. Yeah, it's fine. And I'll just set the other values like the roughness and the metallic. Maybe I'll make it very metallic. Maybe the emission will be like some reddish. It's fine. Okay. Uh, I'm once you're happy, you are happy with your material, with your shader, you can just keep going and edit it. By the way, we do have a wine shader. This is very interesting to use and play around. I recommend you to play around. Let me do some, some of it here. It's fine. But I will leave for you to explore a little bit more about all the material options that we do have here. Well, let me change the UV scale maybe. That looks better. Nice. Anyways, so let me select this and create some copies of this. So I would do shift. Let me rename this first to spike part. So we know. And I do shift D, create another copy right here. Not one right here and right here. Nice, really nice, right? I can mess around with the tint of the spikes as well, creating like many multiple tints here, different colors and variations. It will be fine. This one is going to be a bit darker. Oh, this is enough for the video or not. I'm excited creating the best possible visuals for the spikes. I want this to be very intimidating so the player knows that it can't collide with it. I'm also adjusting so it does not clip here out of the bounds. Nice, it's fine. So if I go back to my scene, if I click here, you can see that I'm back to editing the scene. And of course, I can just uh, double click it again in order to edit this again. And I don't need to click here and back into scene. I can just go to the root folder and select the scene here. The back into scene is just like a shortcut to make life easier. And this is the interesting part. I can literally drag and drop this into my scene. And you can see that we do have an entity template. In the scene here, uh, you can see that the templates do does have like this green uh, look and you cannot select the chi the children's of this template by the way you can only edit this entirely so it's important to keep this in mind 
And of course, I can drag and drop more of this all across my scene. It will be fine. But there is something that it is not working, which is, well, they are colliding. It is colliding with the, the spikes. Maybe I don't want this. Maybe I want, but the, the character is not dying. <laughs> so we need to do something else as well in order to make this character die uh, with these spikes because the spikes are very dangerous, of course. So let's do this real quick. I added the, these, the spikes as well, and I'll go ahead and select them. This will take a little bit of time, but I'll go into the components and I'll delete the rich body components. I don't want each of those individual, spi individual spikes generating physics because well, all of them will make the player die. So it does not make a lot of sense. And in order to make this extra looking extra dangerous, I will select this uh, material here. By the way, this is a shortcut to edit the material. You can just click here and you'll be able to edit. And let me just remove the influence because it's messing up with the lightning. And I'll go into wind and I will click individual. I just said that I wanted to let you guys do this yourself, but no, I give up. I will do this myself because I want this to be faster in the Y axis. So it looks extra, very dangerous. I don't know, it looks very dangerous now. <laughs> really nice. Yeah, now it looks very dangerous. Nice, nice, really nice. Um, and now what I would do is I will like add another mesh here. Actually, I will add an empty, right click and add an empty. And in this empty, I right click and add a box collider. And in cave, you can add a reached body to do this and just not set it to dynamic, meaning that it will not gonna fall with physics. It will just be a box collider. Nothing is appearing here, but again, if I enable the show physics, you can see that we do have a box collider. Uh, the ground here, this mesh does have a reached body. I will disable it as well. I only want this empty to have. And then I can here in the scale, just adjust the scale so it's not too much. Yeah, this is enough. So this will gonna be our collider. And I will click here in the tags. I mean, let me rename this to the spike collision area. So this is the area of collision of my spike. And I'll create a new tag and I'll call it spike. Uh, the tags here in Cave is a great way to identify um, what you are doing, like the objects and the entities in the scene. It's a great way to identify that in collisions and so on. So that's why I'm creating this spike tag here. Okay, I'll click create, make sure it is here, added as a tag. So now we will be able to identify once my player collides with the spike. Let me go back to my scene. Let me disable the physics. Now it looks extra dangerous. I definitely don't want to touch this. It looks very dangerous. You can see here that it is like the, the character is moving on top of it because there's a collider. I can set this to goals if I want, but since I want in for this tutorial to only restart the scene once the player collides with it, with it um, I will leave it like that, it's fine, okay? So let me stop my game and I do the last piece uh, of the puzzle. Let me, let me complete this with the last piece, which is scripting. Yes, we will, you will find some scripting stuff here. Um, let me select the player. By the way, if you want, you can make the player uh, a template. You can just go into settings, click here and, sorry, you can right click in the player. And, oh, it was supposed to be, oh, sorry. You can create a new template, new entity template, and you can click build from selected entity, sorry, okay? And since we do have the player selected, you will be able to build the template with what you've created here. I'm not gonna do this in this video, because again, we already have the player and we it's fine, we are 
moving to the end of this video, so it's fine. Uh, what I would do in the player though, I would select it. I will select it here is go to the components. I will minimize all those three components. We don't want to mess around with them anymore. And I will right click here and I will go into logic and I'll create a Python component, which is a way to create scripts in your projects. And then um, I will cl click here to create a new script. It will ask me for a component name. I will call spike collision. And I'll click create. You can see that it created the script, but not only that, it appears here for me to edit my Python script. And this is very interesting, folks. Uh, the start method here will run on uh, when the component is initialized, and the end will run once as well when the component is destroyed. And and of course, the update method will run every frame. So this is exactly what we need to do. And if you print here, this is Python, by the way. Python is very easy to learn because it's very similar to English. So if I type print every frame you and press play, you'll be able to see here in the right corner of the screen that it is printing stuff every frame. Nice. So this way you can start writing your logic. And you may ask, well, I need an API in order to understand everything that Cave Engine supports. And you are right. And if you click here in help, you'll be able to find the engine documentation and the Python API. And if you open it, it will open in your browser the entire Python documentation and API. So here you can adjust, you can study and read everything, understand. What is an entity, all the properties that it does have, the methods and everything. It's complete here, so you find everything that you need to know in order to get started with um, scripting. For example, I already know, and of course I'm not going to do a full, complete explanation of this. Uh, I leave it for you to explore, but we want to do a physics component specifically the character component, which is the component that we do have. And you want to see if it collided with my spikes tag. And it does have a very handy uh, method to do that, which is the collided with. Great. So the only thing I need to do is to get the component and then check this. And this documentation, again, it does have like an explanation on how to use the components, how to get the components here in the core stuff. So we'll be able to find all the explanation that's necessary in order to, to do this. Okay. Well, let me close this and I will type it very fast and very easily here for you to understand. Let me delete this and I'll get the character component by doing the self dot entity, which is the entity itself dot get and I'll type character, which is the name of the component. You can type character component by the way, but if you want, Cave Engine will understand what you mean if you omit the component suffix, okay? So we can just type character and it will understand. It's fine. And then you do if character dot collided with, and we need to do the spike tag. Let's print something for now. Collided. Let's see, let's see if this works, okay? Um, let me just make make sure that I do have the correct tag because I have a feeling that uh, no, it's the correct one. Spike. Great. So let me play the game. And if I collide with this tag, you might be able to see here. Let me just clear the console, a new message appearing here. Okay. Let me collide. Here we go. You have a bunch of collided here in the bottom right, meaning that it works just fine. Okay, nice, nice. So now what's left for us to do is to just restart the scene. And in cave, it's actually very simple to do this. You can just do cave dot restart current scene and it will restart the scene. Okay, so let me play the game. And when I collide with this, boom, it will restart. So now we do have a great puzzle game that we can do. Of course, we'll be able to do some platforming here. But if I collide with the spike, the scene will restart just fine, just like we can expect, right? And of course, you can always cache this character here in the start method. 
by calling it self.character. And then here I do if self.character dot collided with spike, restart the scene, you can see it's cached, so it will not gonna get the character component every frame. You can do this, it's fine. Oops, here we go. We do have this artifact. Again, I'm working in this, but if you export the game, it will be fine. Well, folks, that's it for this video. It was like a great introduction to Cave, and I hope you enjoyed and learned the, the basics concept, the basic concepts that Cave Engine does provide. There's a lot of good stuff ready for you to use in your pro import and use in your project. So I hope you got the, you had fun in this video and learned a lot. This is pretty much like your very first game. So I'm, I'm excited about that. And uh, let me know in the comments, what do you think about this? Oh, and by the way, I forgot to explain, but if you want to export this as runtime, by the way, you can always press control up a row to maximize the window. So you can see that you can play this in a maximized full screen uh, window here. You can do this with every tag, or you can go in the settings tab and click test your game as runtime. And you can click here to save and run standalone player. And it will save your project and run a new window here with your game. Look at that. Great, and I, and I die it and I it again. Okay, so this is a great way to test your project in a full screen window. Let me close this, press Alt F4. And if you want to export the game, this is very easy uh, as well. I'm gonna zoom in here. The only thing you need to do is to select the startup scene, and then you can click here, ex export game for Windows, and you'll be able to ship this for your friends to play so very easy and straightforward process, okay? So that was it for this video, folks. I hope you enjoyed it and you made a very interesting game as well. I'm very excited to see what you'll be able to uh, do with Cave Engine. So if you have any questions and or you made the game and want to share with us, leave the comments here, leave it in the comments and I will be able to interact with you. By the way, if you want to support this project, if you want to support Cave Engine, uh, Cave Engine is a project that I've been developing myself for more than eight years. So I will leave my Patreon here in the description and you can also donate when downloading the engine if you want and feel like you want to support this project. And of course, the best way to support us is by subscribing in this channel. So if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button to not lose any news about Cave Engine. So that's it for this video, folks. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something new today. My name is Guilherme and I see you in the next video.